Right, let's move on. The leader of Zimbabwe's main opposition party, the Movement for Democratic Change, believes it's time for the older generation to step back and allow new, the new leaders to lead the country, raising prospects of a leadership change in his own party. Morgan Changarai says he's looking at the imminent prospects of the older generation letting go of the levers of leadership to allow the younger generation take over. Pictures of a frail Changarai meeting with President Emerson Nangagwa dominated local and international media recently. A 65-year-old Changarai has been the opposition torchbearer since 2000, and his bitter rivalry with 93-year-old Robert Mugabe, who ruled for 37 years, was often punctuated by violence against opposition supporters. Last August, Changarai reunited with his former allies to forge a coalition to challenge the ruling Zanu PF party in presidential and parliamentary elections due later this year. Well, there's a lot going on. Let's uh, get more on this. African affairs analyst Yinka Oyediji joins us on the program. He's in the studio with me. Uh, welcome to Network Africa. Uh, good comments from Morgan Changarai, but do you think his comments about shifting for the next generation, there may be a change in the leadership of uh, the opposition party in Zimbabwe? Oh, definitely. Uh, I get uh, careful using the word change nowadays, but uh, it's not that, that uh, it's a wind of change uh, blowing in that part of Africa. All right. Uh, we've had a bloodless uh, coup, which has changed the government of Mugabe, something which we thought impossible. And then also, it is also soothing to hear that uh, this former prime minister thinks that uh, the time has also come for opposition to be re-engineered in order to be able to take Zimbabwe to where it needs to be. They still have to conduct democratic elections in that country. So it is positive and uh, it is something to look forward to. Right. Th but being positive like this, how soon do you think it can happen since Changarai didn't really set any timelines. All right, well, well, the health issue is there. I mean, there's right. nothing to take away from that. He's frail looking, even though he's in his 60s, he's suffering from cancer of the colon. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, if you ask me, I would say uh, that the, the man is probably just putting a household in order, all right? It's important to always plan uh, succession. All right, if you look at his age and then if you consider uh, the wind of uh, politics blowing in, in that part of the country, all right, you need, this is a former military leader who's discarded his military garb, who's now wearing uh, suits as uh, the president. So you need agile, young, energetic, uh, dynamic people with uh, fresh ideas to be able to challenge uh, the freshly appointed uh, government in order to get good governance. Right. The Zimbabwe's elections are due in August this year, I believe, mm. and, you know, Changarai himself has been tipped to be the broad leader of uh, the coalition. Mm. So, you know, how would, do you think this would impact on his passionate appeal for a shift? It's nothing anybody can do about having elections. I, I say to you, uh, the change in government of uh, Mugabe was not orchestrated in Zimbabwe itself. The international community is watching. All right, so if uh, those uh, dates have been announced, there can't be a shift in those dates because if we have had relative peace since the change of government, it is predicated upon the fact that all the parties would have agreed that this is a short-term intervention. So be that as it may, we are going to have elections in Zimbabwe later in the year. And uh, the announcement by uh, Sangira himself is strategic. It's just saying to you that the opposition also has surprises, which it will spring. It will be interesting to know that he's got two vice presidents, one of them who is 39-year-old, and who started also for a place in, in governance in the next few months. So this uh, is something that has been properly planned, and I believe it will be implemented. Uh, talking about proper planning, let's mm -hmm. bring it back home uh, to Nigeria and, of course, some other African countries. I know, okay, like Zimbabwe elections are due in August, uh, mm -hmm. in South Africa elections are due next year, 2019. Nigeria is also going to have elections in 2019. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, do you think you know, there's a possibility that, you know, uh, the political parties, the leadership, they could toe this line of, you know, shifting for a younger generation. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. I, I, 
I'll talk responsibly and also with integrity. Uh, even though we want greater participation of young people in politics, I tell you that we currently have a couple of young people in governance. Now, they may not be able to put together, articulate their position and uh, be courageous about pushing their points home, but they are there. We have them in the legal state office of assembly. We've got them even in emo states and all of that. However, the young people who have been in governance before now have been more or less uh, not being able to pull their weight. So more active young people are coming in. I know that uh, Feladro is out there trying to garner support and all of that. And there's so many other young people who have uh, stepped out of their comfort zone. So it's going to happen in Nigeria better than we have had it and better than it is presently. All right. Thank you so much for your thoughts, in Kao, your Energy African Affairs analyst speaking to us on Network pleasure. Africa. Let's move on. Staying in Zimbabwe, anti-corruption authorities have opened an investigation into the controversial award of a doctorate degree to former First Lady Grace Mugabe. Mrs. Mugabe reportedly got the PhD after months of study in 2014. She was personally capped by her husband, Robert, who was also then the Chancellor of the University of Zimbabwe. She was praised at the time by other government officials who defended the controversial degree award. In Tunisia, at least one person has been killed as demonstrations over rising commodity prices and tax increases spread in the North African country. Local media reports that five people were also wounded after the protests turned violent as security forces tried stopping some youths from burning down a government building. Anger has been building up since the government announced that it would increase the price of many major resources and amenities. However, the Prime Minister, Yusuf Kahed, has promised citizens that 2018 will be the last difficult year for them. Tunisia, has, uh, which suffers increasing economic hardship, has been in crisis since the 2011 uprising and seat of the government and two major militant attacks in 2015 damaged the country's tourism. Still to come on Network Africa. Sudan renews complaints at the United Nations, demands Egypt hand over control of the Haliab Triangle border territory. <laughs>